It's time to babble the fuck on. Live from the John Lovitz Podcast Theater, it's Hollywood Babylon. With your hosts, Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman. how it's gonna be huh yeah oh shit <laughs> it is saturday night in hollywood so let's babble the fuck on i'm kevin smith i'm ralph garman <laughs> wow yet another sold out house here at the john lovitz absolutely god man. bless fuck, this <laughs> we, really <laughs> Sir, can you turn my shit up man is that possible <laughs> jacket not like I, that. I never thought i'd say this but can we get kevin a little higher <laughs> Speaking of which, man, there you go. There we go. I'm in the show. Now you sound like a man. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, Strain of the Evening, man, comes all the way from San, San Francisco, San France, that, that over there. That's all, folks. Ironically, it's called the Porky Pig. No, uh, uh, Bubba Kush, man, from our good friend Will. A little bit of Bubba Kush. Bubba That's, Kush. Yeah, yeah. So I'm on fire tonight. I'm in charge and shit. Bubba Kush puts you in charge. Does it? Not really. Lead the show, cause. <laughs> all right. I was gonna I'm hand lost, this book Ralph. over to you and like, no, I can't do it. It's all on your shoulders. <laughs> How you been, man? Before we get fucking started, I know I'm way late on shit, and this is yet another thing I'm late on. But it's good because motherfuckers can watch it right now. They can pause our show, download it, and watch it, or go pick up the DVD or Blu-ray. Have you seen Dread? Oh, Dread, yeah. Oh, it was so fucking good, yeah. man. It was, and what was beautiful about it to me was. It was done within a budget. Like, that's a low-budget comic book movie, man. Like, there's sometimes they're just running around hallways where it's like a Hanna-Barbera cartoon. <laughs> with, <laughs> right. you know, I've seen hallway. that hallway before. Yeah, it's like, I think I saw that cat. It's like in the Matrix and shit. But um, it is fantastic. They did such a fucking great job. So true to the book. Uh, Carl Urban is wonderful. Everything about it is fucking cool. Did you see it? I did see it, yeah. Like, yeah. fucking a year ago, right, when yeah. it happened? <laughs> I saw it when people were still talking about it, actually. <laughs> My bad, man. Well, I'm trying to restart the conversation. <laughs> no, no. I, I'm like the guy that got late to the party. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> um, it, Have you I, tried this punch? <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, I know. We've been drinking it for about four hours. <laughs> you guys know what alcohol is? Um, I watched it on a plane, dude, and I was being audibly appreciative of it, like an urban audience member or something like that, <laughs> interacting with the movie, just like, woo, kick his ass, Dread, punch him in the fucking mouth, and he would do it. You wow, know? that's great. It was pretty tremendous. The story the flight attendant came over. She goes, what's this? Because nobody fucking yells at me on a plane anymore. Because <laughs> they're all scared to death. I swear, dude. You I almost put Southwest out of business <laughs> last time. I, I love the people of Virgin America, man, because every flight doesn't matter. Like, I usually sit kind of in the front in the bulkhead or whatever. And I just, as soon as the plane takes off, they turn off the seatbelt sign. I just sit on the floor right next to my chair. And I put a blanket on me so people don't see the Jabba rolls. And right, all that. yeah. And never once have they been like, this is against the law. You know, they're never like, get the fuck up, man. This ain't hobo airlines and shit. They just let me be comfortable. And I think that's because everyone's afraid that if they're like, oh, you're going to have to get up. I'm like, don't make me go to Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> don't bully a fat boy on Twitter. Now I've got my friend Instagram, too. <laughs> yeah, you're you double barreled. I'll make you famous. Um... <laughs> But uh, I wish they, they came up, what do you watch as a dread? They're like, oh, that looks fun and shit, as opposed to like, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> but it's good. It's so worth your time. Go check it out. I'm sorry I'm late on it. No, it's okay. Uh, not, to, not to backtrack, but you sit on the floor on a plane? <laughs> <laughs> I do now after that fucking incident, man. I just stay out of chairs as quickly as I can. The moment they take the seatbelt sign off, I just sit on the floor and shit so that nobody will come over and be like, you got to buy two of those. I'm like, two floors? <laughs> I guess I'm hard pressed to see how that's more comfortable than a chair sitting on the floor of an airplane. There's, there's enough space, enough leg room and shit. And it's awesome because you're not like when you're in a plane, you're facing this way. Right. Like, you know, like you travel in a car or anything yes. like that. But when you're sitting on the floor, you're traveling to the side and shit. You just feel like you're sliding through time. <laughs> that's because I'm baked before I get on the plane yeah, as well. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, all right. Whatever you need. <laughs> 
Uh, big weekend this weekend. Not uh, not here. Well, here, of course, tonight is a big weekend. But big weekend down in Anaheim. A lot of my friends are uh, tweeting and texting me from uh, WonderCon. <laughs> WonderCon. Wonder oh, weekend. WonderCon's in Anaheim? It's going on right now as we Holy speak. Holy shit, I thought it was in fucking San Francisco. That's right, they moved they it. They moved it to Anaheim. Huge. Yeah. WonderCon, is for those unfamiliar with the geek community, is a sister con to the San Diego com Comic Con or Comic Con International. Right. Fantastic con, mostly creator-based. You have a better chance of meeting people who do your favorite books and stuff, artists and right. writers, not so much Hollywood hype and whatnot. Yeah, so uh, people are saying it's great. Have, is anyone here tonight gone today or anything? You guys gone? Well, thanks for coming back to see us. We appreciate it. We're going to have a little bit of a geek bent throughout the show tonight in honor of Comic-Con going on. So where is this geek and where will it be bent? <laughs> no, just sort of, <laughs> sort of a theme as we go through some of our recurring weekly segments. There'll here. be lots That's of geeky yeah. oriented stuff. Speaking of weekly segments, let's start off with one we look forward to each and every week where we say hi to some people celebrating special occasions or have come particularly long distances each and every week. It's called the Shout Outs. It's a shout out Kevin and Ralph, so get your cock out. <laughs> yeah. Get your cock Get your cock out. Wow. I was trying this rolling technique. You man. really like that guy. <laughs> that was that that there was there was love in that one. <laughs> Usually you're sort of lustful about it, but that was romantic. I, I, I call it the picture pages, man. Cause I got a big marker. I'm like, ah, drawing a smile on my face with a dick. <laughs> Miss Bubba, Bubba Kush. Kush. <laughs> 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 Bubba took over. Yeah. Uh, is Carolyn from Vancouver here? Carolyn, are you here? Where are oh, you, diplomatic immunity. That's yeah, eh? not the right country. This fucking counts. Welcome from Vancouver. Uh, this starts. Uh, this email starts. It's from Alex, by the way, your boyfriend, or at least he was until you got here. I don't know what you've been doing since you arrived. <laughs> My girlfriend Carolyn is coming out to HBO from Vancouver. She's an awesome person. I wish I could be there with her. In a couple months, she will be there remounting watering hole. <laughs> oh, that's, I almost came. <laughs> Just hearing you say that, that sounds so dirty. Alex adds, it's not nearly as dirty as it sounds. Oh. <laughs> because she has a dance company and watering hole is one of the shows she has choreographed. Ah. So you're a choreographer? Oh, you must be flexible as fuck. I dated a dancer once. All kinds of crazy positions are capable with a dancer. The fuck out of here. Like yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Use your imagination. I'm not going to draw you a picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's painting a smile Paint on a her smile face with a dick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's hot. Alex says, could Jerry Lewis wish her luck with her production? Oh, of course he could. He probably wouldn't because he's a miserable old fuck, but <laughs> we can make Alex's dream come true. So you're working on a show called Watering Hole. <laughs> what the fuck kind of show is that, I have to ask? You know, there's kids who can't walk, for fuck's sake. <laughs> and there you are dancing on a stage around a hole full of water. <laughs> Crazy lady, water a hole of life and hoy. I just shit myself. <laughs> there you go. A little love from Jerry. Uh, how about Matt and Jamie? Are you guys here tonight? Matt and Jamie? Where, where? Over there. Uh, my name is Matt. I'll be attending the show on March 30th with my lovely wife, Jamie, celebrating our one-year anniversary. Oh, congratulations, you got. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> 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 Bullshit. <laughs> What, do you want to look at their marriage certificate? I believe they've been married for a year. That's the guy that wanted to marry Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> the spurned lover. He's fucking Matt's Lex Luthor, man. <laughs> he's just following through life from crowds and shit. If anyone addresses him, he's like, fucking horse shit! <laughs> shit him at me! <laughs> you stole my life, Matt! <laughs> I'll steal your glory. <laughs> My wife is so awesome that not only is she coming to Babylon as an HBO virgin, but she also bought us three-day WonderCon passes to celebrate as right well. On, How about man. that? Holy shit. She's a fan of PBS. Well, 
She shouldn't be at HBO if she likes PBS. We're the opposite. I wonder if you could have Huelhauser tell her how amazing she is and wish her a happy anniversary. <laughs> Jamie, you are amazing. You took out your wallet and you paid for tickets for a show? And then you took it out again? And you paid for tickets for a convention? You're amazing. There you go. Liberal with her cash, that Jamie. Yeah, look, I want to see angry Hulhauser. I've to, never, I know, I don't know. I, I know you thing. can't do it, but yeah. so let me see stern Hulhauser at her. Tell her, uh, tell her husband. Wait, she bought the tickets for him. Uh, Jamie bought the tickets for Matt. Tell yes. her husband he's got to paint a smile on her clip with his dick. <laughs> I don't think that's Huel's breed of conversation. Do it, Huel. <laughs> so, Matt, as a thank you to Jamie, I think it'd be great if you'd paint a smile face. <laughs> on her clit with your cock. <laughs> Ew, that's dirty. I said dick, not cock. <laughs> Cocks are amazing. <laughs> Believe me, you would know. <laughs> oh, I'm, you're right, he wasn't gay. My bad. <laughs> Wake the fuck up, you people. He wasn't gay. He, oh. just, he just had an accent. Oh, stop it. <laughs> you have no idea. Like a $3 bill, that guy. Yeah? <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> you know what you can fit up the human sphincter? <laughs> An avocado. It's amazing. Uh, Pi is here. Pi, are you here? How's your life, Pi? Richard Parker. <laughs> Bet you never heard that joke before, did you, Pi? He's like, my name used to be cool. That fucking movie came out. <laughs> and everybody's going, rah. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico, Pi writes, celebrating my 27th birthday here with you guys in town by myself because all my friends are assholes. Oh, right on, man. Way to stick it to the friends who don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> they ditched me last minute before making the trip out here, but that hasn't bothered me from having the weekend of a lifetime. <laughs> What'd you do, Pi? Uh, saw a cool band. Which band? Newfound Glory. New Newfound Glory. Glory, right on. Cool and band. you went to Disneyland as well? Both things by yourself? Happy, sad birthday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh... We got... Cool. Is anybody else here by themselves? Perhaps uh, some... What are you into, guys Any or girls? Any other singles? Guys or girls? Girls. Are you sure? Welcome to Los Angeles. Put a dick in your mouth. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> let me tell you. Guys are amazing. <laughs> Any other singletons in the crowd? Anybody else here by themselves? Yeah, who wants a piece of pie tonight? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> give it up, give it up right here. That was strong. <laughs> oh, Bubba Kush. <laughs> Buy a fucking bale of that. <laughs> Smoke nothing else. You watch, it's only good for a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> then I start getting hungry and shit. I'm like, where the fucking snack? <laughs> Shut up! Uh, Pi says, I was hoping you'd give me a shout-out during the March 30th show. Well, I think we, we did that significantly, Pi. He also would like to hear the Al Pacino More Margaritas song. Now, before it became our, our uh, Hollywood Helper theme song, it did exist in a life of its own as the More Margaritas song. One of our uh, faithful listeners put it to music and had Al Pacino talking about More Margaritas to a tune, and I think that's what Pi's looking for, so I think it's only fair. Oh, fuck. We need like a dance mix of that. We'd make a million dollars. I could, uh, honestly, if you put that on loop, I'll just bake to that all day long. <laughs> Uh, okay, the next shout-out is for uh, Herbert, Maria, Rosa, Lucy. It's to Herbert, Maria. Da, 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 Thank da, da, you so much, Ashley. 
You fucking missed that because you were so into <laughs> booze. Someone bought me a shot. It's very nice. Who bought me this shot? Who, who was the person? What? Who? What? Where? Back there. Over the there. Thank hand. you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, my liver thanks you as well. <laughs> Uh, this email comes from Herbert, Maria, uh, Rosa, and Lucy, and they are here celebrating <laughs> nothing. All right, good. <laughs> uh, Lucy writes, I don't know if this will reach you in time for tomorrow's show, but I'm tending with my husband, Herbert, my sister, Maria, my cousin, Rosa, visiting all the way from the high Attending desert. Attending with Herbert, Maria, <laughs> ba -ba -da -da -ba -ba. <laughs> Oh, uh, the rest of this email, I think we need some sad Hulk music. Can we have a little sad Hulk, James? Yeah. Recently, my cousin Rosa has been a little depressed because she met a guy she really liked. <laughs> but he turned out to be hiding a really big secret from her. He had a vagina. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Oh, oh. Wouldn't that be great? Oh, I was getting ready to tug it right now. I was like, get the fuck out of here. I want to no, hang no, out with no. you. That's crying this is not to be made shit. light of. This is this is a bad this is a bad right, story. Yeah, well, stop making light of it. He turned out to be married. Oh, that's but, not nearly as sexy. But separated. Oh. Well, needless to say, the relationship did not pan out, and Rosa was very sad about it. Oh. Have you met Pie, Rosa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right up here. <laughs> There's some whipped cream on that pie. <laughs> a la mode. <laughs> I was wondering if you could cheer her up by having Ed Wynn let her know that she deserves so much better than that prickless fuck. Also, my sister Maria thinks Kevin is sexy. Can you have him say hello to her in his sexy voice? Hello. Are you sure she didn't have a pussy? <laughs> Wrong girl. Oh, oh. <laughs> Maria, the sister, thinks you're sexy. Rosa was the one with the prickless fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Try again. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't hit on one person and then, like, fucking be like, I'm sorry, and hit on the person next to him. <laughs> Who the fuck am I, Jason Muse? <laughs> All right, uh, this is for Rosa. Oh my goodness, Rosa! Here's the thing, not every man is a pig just looking to stick his penis into any warm, wet hole he can find. All right, every man is like that. But the key is to find one that's not married, you see. Or one that doesn't have a vagina. Because I heard earlier about that guy, and it's a mess, don't you know? But don't worry, life is for the living. And as far as I can tell, you're still living. Right? right? There we go. <laughs> All right. Seriously, man. Pa, they're one separated by one flight. Really? Pie, one Rosa, flight up. Just have a yeah. drink with each other, man. Hey, quick hand job in the parking lot. <laughs> Maybe a little diddle, you know, whatever the fuck. It's all good at the Lovitz. <laughs> That's their new slogan here. Because <laughs> that should be on a shirt. <laughs> it's all good at the love it. <laughs> uh, Kara, Brian, Danielle, and Jacob. Hey. Only one of you is happy to be here. <laughs> My husband Brian are here for our second HBO show, writes uh, Kara along with my sister, Danielle, and her husband, Jacob. They're visiting here from Nebraska. Well, welcome. Wow, man, Nebraska, right on. Don't take offense if Danielle gets up to puke during the show. She's bulimic. No, oh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. She's not bulimic. Shut up. <laughs> She's in the wonderful first trimester of pregnancy. Oh, my. Ha. Nebraska. See how yeah. it traveled, though? Yeah. Just <laughs> it's nice. Like, it tried, like a cracked egg on a head. It would just seep down and, until people got it. Can you please have Al Pacino tell them to move the fuck back to California already? We miss them. Oh. 
own. <laughs> what are you thinking? Living in Nebraska. <laughs> Nebraska is to states what chlamydia is to dating. Ooh, uh. <laughs> I stole that from Kevin. That's a line Kevin wrote for me. I stole that from him. <laughs> Don't fucking give me credit for that line. <laughs> it's all you, buddy. <laughs> I no. stand by Oma. Oh, huh? you know what? You're going to hate me, but I missed this part because they spelled it wrong. Maybe Bane can say a quick congratulations to them on the upcoming baby. Oh, I hope you have a lovely child. <laughs> and lastly, for the shout outs, Caleb, Scott, Max, Lucas, Anthony, and Greg. <laughs> They're not here? You fuckers. Uh, they were the ones who were going to ask for David Bowie. That hurts. Oh. But you know what? I know why they're not here, because they're, they're uh, starting off the bachelor party with the show here tonight. Oh, so they probably got caught up and shit. Yeah, they're balls deep in hookers by now. Yeah. yeah. Good for them. Maybe I can do an angry David Bowie, the fact they didn't show. Maybe, okay. that's, maybe that's the way Fly to go. Fly it, man. Fly yeah. it. Can we fire up a little Bowie there, James? Fuck you for not being here. Fuck you, Caleb, Scott, Matt, and Lucas. Fuck you, Anthony, Greg, and Justin. I hope you catch a venereal disease from the hookers that you're fucking and the blow that you are doing. Your bachelor party's ruined. By a heart attack one of you has I say fuck you, Caleb Scott, Max, Lucas, and me Fuck you, Greg and Justin Saying you're going to be <laughs> them not Kevin will be performing that at the bachelor party later on this evening. <laughs> Doing that dance for him. Would you I like to have a seat on the ground here and get comfortable? Or are you okay? <laughs> it just makes me giggle because, like, I stood on a stage in Cannes once. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm like, I'm sucking my own booby. <laughs> <laughs> Life takes you funny places. Doesn't it, though? <laughs> we get emails from all around the world as well. It's my email bag. featuring Kevin's reactions. <laughs> Jared Thorbon writes, I saw this photo of Justin Bieber and did a double take. Because it, at first I thought it was the star of one of my favorite movies. Uh, I'm going to put this picture up for you so you can see for yourself what Jared was talking about. It's Justin Bieber here. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> it's Janine from Ghostbusters on the other side. <laughs> I can understand why he'd be shocked. She does look like she should be running the uh, running things at the fire station there. Ghost Beaver, what do you want? <laughs> Thank you, Jared. I never noticed that before, but he does. He does look like Janine from Ghostbusters. They're like totally Sally Jesse Raphael frames. <laughs> they man. are, yeah. He's got swag, yo. I hear his mom. Some his mom had to defend him. She's like, he's not melting down. Oh, when your mom's got to step in and defend you, oh, yeah. you're fucking melting Shit. down. My mom fucking stood up to Michael Leahy when I was in fucking fourth grade, and for the next three grades, people were like, don't mess with Kevin, his mom might show <laughs> oh, up. Oh, no. Oh, I, I would in retrospect, I would have taken the ass beating any day, man, just to hold on to that fucking dignity because my muscle became my mother, you know? You leave Tiger alone. That's <laughs> yeah. what she, said. she will lecture you to death, buddy. Uh, Danny Bowling of Greenfield, Massachusetts writes in. My name is Danny. Been listening since episode one. Probably listened to the entire podcast library about three or four times. The other night I was rereading Ultimates Comics X-Men number 10 when I was surprised to see a familiar looking face on page five, the first panel. 
It takes place in a mutant containment camp. Do you know who this is? He writes. Who's this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I never knew you I were in a mutant that, containment no. camp. I, I try not to talk about that time. <laughs> <laughs> what was your mutant power? The blob. Oh, I see. <laughs> Yeah, did you know you were featured in an X-Men comic? I did not. I had no idea, Look man. how cute you are there. I know. Look, how I'm, I'm a living cartoon, but I'm so much thinner. Yeah, they're starving <laughs> you in that camp. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> should call the Geneva Convention and get a meal or two. That's horrible. Uh, well, that's your embarrassment. Here's mine. Yeah, my name is Pedro. I am talking from Brazil, he writes. <laughs> that's awesome. It's not awesome. English fucking language. Learn it. Oh, yeah. My Pedro. Name is Pedro, and I am talking from Brazil. He's not talking from Brazil. He's fucking writing from Brazil. <laughs> I, know, I know, but he doesn't know that. He's cute. <laughs> we should adopt him, man. <laughs> he writes a cute letter. How old is this kid? He's 42. Oh. <laughs> this isn't one of those late night commercials where there's a photo on the screen, and for the price of a cup of coffee a day, we can feed him and his family. He's a, he's a grown fucking man writing an email. Started listening to HBO a couple months ago, still halfway through the entire run through. In episode 42, a guy found a clip of Ralph Garman on Doogie Hauser. Yeah, we did do that once. Remember, we were going to do an ongoing bit called Garbage with all the Ralph Garman bits of me on my horrible TV career? I'm still lost on the visual of Ralph Garman on Doogie Hauser. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was an EMT, man. Oh, I thought he meant on Doogie Hauser. No, <laughs> stop it. A very special episode and shit where one of the other doctors was like, hey, Doogie. <laughs> You're amazing, <laughs> Doogie. Um, I also found out he was in one episode of Highway to Heaven. We were just talking about that a couple weeks ago, That's remember? Right. Yeah, yeah. I was like, get the fuck out of here. I worked with Michael Landon in 1988 on a show called Highway to Heaven, and uh, we hit it off on the set. Stop it. And uh, <laughs> he, he said, well, I'm doing another show, and i got other stuff coming up. I'd like to work with you again. And then he promptly died after that, so... Yeah, it was very sad. He was he was he was a, uh, a nice nice guy. But this guy, sadly, to my chagrin, found the episode that I was in, Highway to Heaven, and sent in a clip of me from 1988, once again working in a hospital. Thank you, fucking Pedro, for this. This is a clip of me from Highway to Heaven playing a naval corpsman at a hospital from 1988. Extreme lower abdominal pain. We'll take it from here, Tony. Yeah, how about that, huh? Can we throw up a still? Do we have a, a, a screen cap of, uh, of me in that role in case you missed it because it was 30 seconds? Look Dude, at how young and beautiful I was. You must have been like fucking beside yourself, man. Like that was a show that a lot of people saw. That was the I... biggest show on NBC at yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, look how young and, and hopeful and still looking forward to my life I was at that point. Before I came, the bitter fucking drunk you see before you tonight. I don't know, man. I look up there, I see a hero. It's true, man. If like I knew you in 1988 and fucking I saw Doogie Hauser and you were on, I'd be like, this guy's living the fucking dream and shit. Not everyone gets to be fucking Doogie, man. Sometimes you're the guy who's like... He's sick, and then you run off camera. <laughs> yeah, that was me. <laughs> well, that's fucking awesome. You must have been like so fucking. Enthused. I was. I was excited. I was very poor, and I was very happy to have the job. Actually, at that moment. You know what's weird, dude? When I worked at Quick Stop, there's no fucking lie. I watched that show religiously. You might have seen me while I might have watched that Stop. episode and never fucking thought one day I'll be sitting next to that guy. He said, "Fucking weird." He said, "See that guy there? Someday I will give him no lines in a movie." <laughs> that's what you said. <laughs> I'll tell you, man, I'll take that because I'm I've more than made up for it. I've been writing Clerks Three for the so last. So I've two heard, weeks. yeah. So I've heard. I do. Oh, it's it's been so much fun. But you have hands down. I've read it, of course, because I'm working on it. I've only let two people read it so far. Uh, my wife Jennifer, who would like hates everything funny in the world. <laughs> <Right>. So <laughs> no, she's actually a pretty good judge of comedy. She's not a huge fan of my stuff, but that's why it was pretty good to put it in front of her. Um, and then Brian Johnson, the guy, my friend Brian. Love um, Brian. Yeah, from <laughs> Comic, Comic Book, Book Man, Man of and Tom Steve um, So both of them uh, have read it, and they both agree. I'm not going to go into what they said and shit, because naturally they like me. They're predisposed to like it and whatnot. But the fucking thing that, that, that I was so delighted both of them said was there's a moment that you have that both of them listed in their top 
two funniest moments in the whole flick. They wow. Were like, this, when this happens, that is fucking hysterical. I was like, I literally laughed out loud writing it, man, because I thought of Garmin doing it. I was like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> So you've got, you got, not only do you have lines, you also have what the very select group who've read it so far, I think, is one of the funniest moments of the movie. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm a hobo who gets set on fire or something, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's a, I'm going to fucking write that down, <laughs> man. That's a good idea. Uh, Joel Sutton from Monroe, Louisiana, writes in. Uh, Listen to the show every week. Helps me keep my sanity while dealing with my daily deeds. Uh, it would be nice if Ralph could do me a solid and tell me what it would be like for Harrison Ford to have a total meltdown and do the Christian Bale rant. <laughs> this Christian Bale rant has taken on a life of its own. It's, it's uh, Christian Bale on the set of Terminator 5, or whatever the fuck it was. Salvation, yeah. And uh, it's, it was uh, audio captured on the set of him melting down against the guy who was the uh, DP, I guess. And he goes off on him, and we've done it now with several different people taking their shots at the Christian Bale rant, which is, oh, good for you. Uh, do I come to your place? Do I go mess with your lights and go la di da di da No, no, no. We are done professionally, mate. That's basically the rant. And uh, he wants to hear it as Harrison Ford, which is going to be hard to do. This bit will need a theme song very I soon. I think it will, yeah. 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 Um. I can't know where you put your lights in. La di da di da di da. No. 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 Oh, good for you. You and I are done professionally. There you go. There's the Christian Bale rant. And speaking of bits we do each and every week, uh, people have been writing in asking for the Green Lantern's oath that he uses to recharge his power ring each and every week in a different voice. This is this week's. In brightest day, in blackest night, Ralph's impressions shine most bright. The oath will make the crowd go mental if it's not fucked up by Ryan Reynolds. Ralph's Green Lantern oath. This week's oath comes from Pablo Hernandez from Oxnard, California. In the spirit of this year's Oscar tribute to James Bond, I would love to hear Sir Sean Connery recite the Green Lantern Oath. <laughs> Thank you and keep up the great work. Pablo Hernandez, Oxnard, California. In brightish day or blackish night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> there you go. He would have made a great Green Lantern, Sean Connery. He would have been oh a good yeah, one. Yeah. Tomar Ray, fuck oh. yes. Yeah. Every week we take a look at people in show business who have passed on, who have left us in the past week, who left behind huge bodies of work that we still will appreciate long after they're gone. We like to give them a little send-off. It's called the Tinseltown Stiffs. And now another edition of Tinseltown Stiffs. They will be missed. Bunch of people left us this week, starting with Grammy-winning producer Phil Ramone is dead at the age of 72. I'm not familiar with this gentleman's name. You're not familiar with his name, Ava, but you're familiar with his work. He won 14 Grammys as a producer of Good music, including three record and albums of the year. He worked with Burt Bacharach, Bono, Ray Charles, Bob Dylan, Aretha Franklin, Quincy Jones, Madonna, Paul McCartney, Paul Simon, Frank Sinatra, and Stevie Wonder, just to name a few. I'm sure that dude was like, I'm not familiar with your fucking name, <laughs> fat boy. <laughs> yeah, he did a lot of work with uh, Billy Joel, produced all of his records when he was with uh, CBS. Get out of here, though. Yeah. I'm very familiar with his work. Uh, his soundtracks that he produced, Flashdance, Ghostbusters, and Midnight Cowboy, did all that as well. Those are two of my favorite soundtracks. He is a massive, uh, massive talent, and now has passed away at the age of 72. So. Big bucket of win, man. Indeed. While we're talking about people who did an enormous amount of work in their lifetime, a trumpeter by the name of Derek Watkins passed away this week. You don't know his name. He was a session player. He was one of these guys who was always super talented, loved by other professionals in his industry, would bring him into the recording studio to lay down tracks because they knew they could count on him. He did uh, work with, well, people like the Beatles. He played the trumpet parts on Strawberry Fields Forever and Penny Lane. He did that. Wow. He worked with Frank Sinatra, Barbara Streisand, Elton John, U2, Eric Clapton, Dizzy Gillespie, Placido Domingo, Jesus. Robbie Williams, Oasis. 
But his real claim to fame is he played on every soundtrack of every James Bond movie in the history of the franchise. When he was 17 years old, he worked on a movie called Dr. No, and this is the sound he played on that soundtrack. Oh, shit. That's, He's the guy? That's Derek wow. Watkins. And he played the lead trumpets. trumpet part in every soundtrack to every James Bond film from that till Skyfall. He Fuck was the guy on here. every one of those soundtracks. Huge cauldron to win. That's fantastic. Passed away at 68 this week after a two-year battle with cancer, which I fucking don't like, by the way. I want to go on the record and say I am anti-cancer. Mm. Whoa, 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 hold up. There, no, man. I'm we sorry, know. Kevin. No, Kevin, I have to say this. We I, don't want to alienate the audience. I, no, now. I'm sorry. I have to take a stand, and I want to say to it. You can look at my face, and I'm saying this out loud to you, person to person. I am against cancer. Yeah, man. I don't care Jim, how you fucking Jim Carrey, feel. Jim Carrey hates guns. You hate cancer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Taking a stand. Uh, Derek also played on The Mummy, Basic Instinct, Indiana Jones, all those films, Gladiator, uh, Superman 1 and 2, Bridget Jones' Diary. I wonder if he Diary. was the fucking trumpet on Superman. Because there's a lead trumpet. Yeah. Da, da, da. <laughs> Yes! Do you think he was that guy? I'm sure he was. He was the Could lead trumpet. Imagine, all man, like stuff. Everybody knows that James Bond thing. If you just do... Da, 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 that's like him. Everybody fucking knows that. That's going to live on work. forever. His, imagine doing something in your body of work that's going to live on for fucking ever. Mm -mm. Yeah, fucking cop out. Yeah, well, sure. They got that. <laughs> Uh, I know you've got a soft spark, Kevin, uh, Kevin, for ri writers in your life. Yeah, huge uh, writer. Don Payne passed away this week. You may not know that name either, but he was one of the creative minds behind The Simpsons. He was one of the people who made The Simpsons as successful as they were. Get out of here. He won four Emmys for his work on The Simpsons. Uh, passed away this week. Also wrote uh, Thor, Thor 2, the one they're going to be working on. He was a big geek, wrote Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, and uh, was a, a, a very talented, funny man who wrote a lot of great screenplays as well as all those Simpson episodes. He wrote, I liked Thor quite a bit. I, I did too. Really I thought it was well really strong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and my super ex-girlfriend had moments as well. He wrote that as well. Uh, Gordon oh, Stoker. He'll be, that's, he'll be missed, man. The Simpsons, come on. Yeah, really. Simpsons can't shit. get any better than that. Generations of comedy to come. Huge bucket of win on that guy. Gordon Stoker passed away this week. He was a member of perhaps the most successful backup band in the history of music. He was one of the Jordanaires. You know who the Jordanaires were? And they sing with Elvis. Or they something? backed up Elvis mm. for 14 years on stage and on record. He also backed up with the Jordanaires Patsy Cline on the song Crazy, Kenny Rogers on the song Lucille, and George Jones on He Stopped Loving Her Today. Oh my God, I love He Stopped Loving Her. He Stopped Loving Her Today. What That's do they sing? What part are they? All the background voices. They're doing all They're the like harmonies and stuff. The he plays the rhythm on the door. <laughs> You know wow, yeah. I do know that song. Yeah, that's pretty My father good. was a huge George Jones fan, oh, really? which has subsequently made me a somewhat of a George Jones fan as well. They met Elvis in 1955. They were an established gospel group already. They performed. He was unknown in 55. He mm. saw them and said, if I ever get anywhere in this business, if I ever get a, a record deal that's worth anything, I will hire you guys to come in and record with me. And they said, fuck off, greaser. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't. They were all good Christian boys. They said, well, that's very nice, son. And they kicked him in the balls. No. <laughs> so he went off, and he signs with RCA a year later, and he's the biggest recording star in the world in 1956. And sure enough, he was true to his word. He finds them and brings them into the studio and makes them his, his backup singers, not only for that year, but for the next 14 years. Until 1970, they were working together. You're going to make me cry. That's so sweet. It's a great man. story. That's Here's really a little awesome. piece of the Ed Sullivan show with uh, uh, Elvis on it. And behind them, in the horrible checkered j suit jackets, you can see the Jordanaires backing him up on Don't Be Cruel. <laughs> It goes something like this. You know I can be found Sitting from all along If you can't come around At least please a telephone It's pretty cool. Yeah. He passed away this week at 88, 88 years old. It's weird. That explains the story of why they always looked incongruous to me. Because as you point out, he is a fucking greaser. And they, they look they were like gospel his, singers. his dads or his uncles or something like that. Yeah. But that would make sense. They're gospel singers. What do you do for a living? I wear a checkered jacket and go, bop, bop. <laughs> and get a big fucking check. So blow me, said Gordon. Yeah, I stay home, no jacket, going bop, bop. I make no money. 
And lastly, Richard Griffiths passed away this oh, week fuck, at the man. age of 65. This guy's a fucking legend. Can we throw Richard's picture up there? You, you know, will know him. this guy. You may not know his name, but you'll recognize his face. You know him, of course, as Uncle Vernon from the Harry Potter franchise. Or with Nail and with I. With Nail and I. Played Uncle Monty in that film. Was a History uh, Boys, he won an Emmy for. Uh, not an Emmy, a, a, a fucking a Tony, Tony for. And also won an Olivier in the UK for the production over there. Mm. He's, he was a, one of the most beloved, most accomplished stage and screen actors that England had to offer. Passed away this week at 65 after uh, complications following heart surgery. Very large man, very yes. light on his feet, though. Yeah. Like he could move around very well and a very expressive in his acting. And they accredited to the fact that he was raised by two deaf mute parents. So his first language was sign language, and uh, he learned the actors who worked with him say he read faces and what you were saying like nobody else. Like he was so present in the scene because he wasn't just listening to you. He'd learned growing up to be in somebody's face, and it made him so much better at what he did. It, it was a really fantastic talent. If you've ever, I mean, of course he was in the Harry Potters, and he's very charming and funny in those, but. Go back and watch History Boys. Go back, uh, way back, and watch With Nail and I. Like yeah. this, the dudes, uh, losing him is a fucking loss, man. It's a shame. He was the guy in, w in the Naked Gun movies, too, in, yes. the, in the wheelchair, <laughs> who goes flying across the moon like yes. E.T. Remember that scene? That's him, too. He yeah. yeah. can do it all. He can do broad work. comedy, serious yeah. drama. Just one of the good. He will be missed, man. It always sucks when we lose a fellow fatty, too. So yeah. that's, that's a massive fucking lifetime of win. Bye, Richard. So sorry. Every week we take a look at moments in TV shows and movies where hundreds of pairs of eyes have taken a look at this stuff, and yet somehow shit still slips through the cracks and gets to you, the viewer. It's a segment we call Shit That Should Not Be. And now for shit we should not see. Here's some shit that should not be. <laughs> this week's Shit That Should Not Be. Frankly, I'm embarrassed that it took us this long to get to it. And uh, Damien from Melbourne, Australia, called us out on this, and he's right, and I apologize. And I thought this week, with WonderCon being right down the street and everything, it would be appropriate to do. One of the uh, all-time fuck-ups in movie history mm -hmm. from shit that should not be from one of the great films of all time, Star Wars, as we used to call it when I was a kid. Now I guess it's known as Episode Four, yeah. A New Hope. A New Hope. Yeah. This is, uh, this is Luke Skywalker himself. This is Mark Hamill. He's just blown up the Death Star. He's very excited. He flies back into the home base from his uh, X-Wing fighter. He's, he's looking for his uh, sister. Does he know he's his sister at this Not point? Yet. Not at this no, point. He doesn't find out. He, he's, he's looking for the girl out. he wants to fuck. <laughs> uh, Princess Leia. And yet Mark Hamill and all his excitement. Well, the following happens. Yeah, in case you missed it, he calls out, Carrie, and gives her a big hug. Uh, Carrie Fisher, of course, playing Princess <laughs> Leah in that scene. Here's the thing, and Damien points this out, and I recognize it as well, is that with all the extra stuff added to all the special editions of all the Star Wars we've seen since, Lucas never fucking fixed that moment. <laughs> so he can fuck up good moments, but he just can't seem to, fuck, to fix the fuck ups. That's what George Lucas is, and that's why Disney put a gun to his head and make him sign the contract. <laughs> I'm shocked we were allowed to play that clip without fucking Disney slapping us with a cease and Well, and trust me, there show. are stormtroopers somewhere up in the rafters <laughs> that will be... That's why they bought them. They're like, we don't care about the movies. We want the fucking clones. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and uh, again, along with the theory, uh, or rather the through line that we've had about the uh, Comic-Con coming up this weekend, there is a moment in exquisite acting. I know we hit Nicolas Cage pretty hard in this segment where we take a look at, at high-level celebrities giving in less than A-list <laughs> performances. But this week's Nicolas Cage moment, I think, is worthy of exquisite acting. <laughs> to be or not to be, that is the question. Welcome to the world of exquisite acting with Ralph Garman and Kevin Smith. <laughs> this week's exquisite acting features Nicolas Cage's performance in Kick-Ass, another comic book movie, since we're talking about WonderCon. A great performance, I yeah, thought. I mean, can you really... The whole fucking performance you could cite as exquisite acting because he's <laughs> chewing the fucking scenery in an Adam West-like way. But no moment more so than at the very end when he's actually on fire talking to his oh, daughter, Hit Girl. Oh, this is fucking sad. Well, I'm I, not going to do that part. It's not oh. the, the end-end part. Okay. It's the part where the, he just starts getting on fire. 
And he yells out to her, which I, I believe the line is, take cover, child, and switch to kryptonite is the line, which yeah. is one of the plans they have for right. he's been training her all these years how to cover the bad guys. This is a fucking excellent comic and an excellent movie. It is all of those things. It, yeah. But this particular line delivery, I think, may <laughs> go from <laughs> bad all the way around to exquisite acting. <laughs> This is from Johnny and Kate in Edinburgh, Scotland. They sent this one in. Here's for them, uh, Nicholas Cage from Kick-Ass. No! Take cover, to grip the knife! <laughs> 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 I'm telling you, man, it's going to take about 20, maybe 30 years, but people are going to go back and be like, he was nothing but genius. <laughs> he never fucking delivered a line the way anybody else would, That man. much is true. But that's, he brought his own spin to it, even something as simple as that. People are like, you're dying, say fucking switch to crypto. Switch to crypto because Does it matter head, at all that nobody can understand what the fuck he's saying? Does that, is that a problem? In his head, he's sitting there going like, I'm fucking dying. I'm right. on fire. I'm, on like, fire. I'm not going right. to be in intelligible. I'm trying to spit it out before my last gasp. But right. it wouldn't sound like, switch to crap tonight. Ugh. It would sound like, switch to crap tonight. <laughs> you say so, Sparky. <laughs> so. In keeping with the WonderCon theme this week, each and every week we have you talented Hollywood Babylon listeners, uh, Photoshop your photos of Kevin being in places where he shouldn't be. <laughs> it's maybe my favorite segment of the week. It's known as Kev In. What's Kev In today? Something crazy or awesome or gay? And by gay we mean homosexual, like maybe some dudes, but what's Kev In? What's Kev In this week? Well, it's Kevin cosplay. It's as if Kevin... If a Kevin was at every Comic-Con you ever went to, how would Kevin look as Kevin in cosplay? I'm intrigued. Cosplay, of course, for those of you who don't speak geek, is, uh, is costume play. It's people who dress up as their favorite characters and go to these Comic-Cons, and they enter in the masquerade contest and win valuable prizes and things like that. Or they just go around in the street and just solicit hookers. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what I did when I used to dress up. Here's uh, the first pick. This is Kevin uh, as the Kingpin, legendary Spider-Man and, uh, and Iron Man <laughs> villain, the Kingpin, <laughs> posing with a fan at one of the conventions. Very yeah. impressive. You don't that's look too happy about it, Kev. But that's why, uh, that is why I will hold on to every fucking last hair I have because <laughs> that's what it's going to look like, man. Just an endless head that rolls into neck Mr. and shoulder. And You'd be awesome. Total fisk, man. I'd be fisking it. <laughs> You've been fisted before. Oh, shit. I'm double fisted there. <laughs> this character at this particular comic con, this photo we're showing you, is a character we call Silent Boba. <laughs> <laughs> I look pretty cute. You look pretty good there. It's, that's the first Kevin that I'm like, I agree with this. Silent Boba. <laughs> Silent Baba. And, of course, this photo was taken years ago uh, when Kevin and I, uh, one of the first Comic-Cons Kevin and I ever went to. We were both very young. Here's uh, us as Batman and Robin, of course. Here's me. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, that this rocks, young man. Kevin as Robin, my youthful sidekick. Look at your little mustache you're working on there. That is that. me at age 14, man. Yeah. That's my Henry Hudson class photo freshman year. <laughs> That's what I look like, little milk mustache. You're pretty and cute. Shit. Totally, man. I was getting pussy butt in. Are you used as a pussy, or are you were getting pussy? <laughs> no, man, I was, I was fucking sexually active. At 14? Yes, I was a sexually active at 12. You lost your virginity at 12? Yeah, I met somebody who was really cool. <laughs> I never knew this about I you. I did, but about by age 13, I realized, like, fucking, it's no good to just be like, pff, you got to get, you know, bring something to the table. Uh, the men of my time, or the boys of my time particularly, were all about... You know, first base kissing, second base do this, which fucking some I don't know any lady that likes this, <laughs> but nobody ever taught us like no get in there smooth and fucking you know make love and suckle not bite and <laughs> shit like that. And nobody tells you this kind of shit. So third base was just sawing at pussy if you could get to it. And luckily I had a girl that was just like no man fucking like you gotta know what you're doing down oh, there like you I had a could, teacher. Well also like nobody educates you like they know a dude knows he comes right because you jerk off and there's fucking you produce something there's a result it ends there's a climax and shit. 
but nobody, you know, tells you like, oh, women can come too, just because they don't have something shooting out of them and shit like that. So I had a girl who was just like, you gotta learn what you're doing, man. So at age 12, I got this book, a gynecological textbook that I found at a, a, a estate sale. Like my mom. This story gets weirder and weirder. <laughs> I got an agent text from a dead man. And I opened it up, the dust-covered book <laughs> revealed to me the secrets of the labrum. <laughs> the dude was just like, uh, don't feed it after midnight and don't get away. <laughs> but I did. I got Point Axton, my father said. <laughs> I got a, at this sale, I guess it was a doctor's house. And so, they, you know, people die and they sell their entire estate. And my mom worked for a company that went in and liquidated houses and shit. So I would go in and work these sales. You know, you need to stand in a room, make sure people aren't stealing shit or tell people where to park and whatnot. I get like five bucks for the day. I was 12 years old. It was like 1982. I see this book. Gynecolo it says gynecological studies or something like that. It's a thick-ass textbook. looked like it was from the 40s or 50s. Opened it up. Drawings of vaginas. Oh, dude. Pictures of vaginas. Get the fuck out. But fucking 50s vaginas, so nothing but fucking bush. Oh, sure, yeah. But so that you was said, good first enough. thing, get a machete. That's what you thought to yourself. <laughs> get through. But that was where I learned. I studied the art of the female body and learned how to make a women come. This is the clitoris. Search for the G-spot and all this fucking shit. Wow. And so when I was about 13, I was like a fucking lick master from the <laughs> Orient, man. I, was, I knew what the fuck because I, I was very... And also it took a few more years for me to realize like women could come just from sex. Like I thought it was only from oral. So I was one of those motherfuckers who was like, gangway! Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Because I wanted to make sure they came first to right. show them how slobberingly grateful I was to be getting any action and sure. shit. And so that they always thought in the future, one lonely night, they're like, none of the cool guys are calling me, but that fat boy ate pussy yeah. real well, yeah. you know. <laughs> so they fucking call me back and shit. That's great. Sorry. Anyway, back to the show. <laughs> now we all know way more than we ever wanted to about <laughs> Kevin Smith. But I'm just stunned you found a 12-year-old. At 12 years old, you found a woman who was willing to, uh, a girl. She's a girl, my a age. Girl. My she age. was the same age as you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should be arrested. <laughs> You're up. We're, we're the same age. Same. Diff bad. Bad, <laughs> Kevin. Bad. <laughs> it's, it's I should have lived in fucking Jersey. I was right across the river from you in Philadelphia. No 12-year-olds were putting out when yeah. I was 12. When did, you, when did you lose it? 16, like a normal human being. Fuck out of here. Like a regular person. I wasn't a pervert like you, for fuck's sake. This is even weirder, man. Here, I'll, I'll admit to this. It's going to make me sound stupid. And I didn't grow up like fucking boo. But this is going to sound... This is gonna I'm sorry, sound, how didn't you grow up again? Boo, but this, this is going to sound so like fucking hillbilly, it's nuts. I, I, didn't re I had sex at 12 and didn't realize I did until I was 16. You didn't know you had had sex? Once again, dude, nobody ever sits you down. We Kids now are educated. You got the internet or you got parents that'll sit you down and fucking tell you shit. My parents didn't tell me anything. Fucking Catholic. I was went to Catholic school. They didn't fucking tell us anything except don't ever touch it. You know? And right. So nobody fucking educates you. So to me, the definition of sex, I almost had a Clintonian definition of sex before Bill Clinton. My definition of sex was sex only happens if you come inside the, the woman. So I'd been like, me and this girl had been like fucking, I'd been in her and stuff, and then I'd pull out and come, and I'd be like, we're still virgins. <laughs> you should have been a priest. I could have. Yeah. Could have, same logic. So yeah. by the time yeah, I Yeah, we replaced girl with boy, and you yeah, could have been yeah, a priest. Yeah, totally. You had to take it dirty and, and Catholic and shit like that. Um, but that, yeah, but so it wasn't until I was 16 That's that so funny. You somebody said, was just like, fuck. Well, the moment you're inside, you've sex, had sex. Yeah. 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 I, I, I was a late bloomer in intelligence, early bloomer in sex. <laughs> in penis, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that's the end of our show, folks. <laughs> No, no, we've got more showbiz stuff. We're like, we're going to do the real show right now. It's, uh, I feel every like we're just doing love lines. For I know. A second, yeah. <laughs> every week, we also like to take a look at the biggest stories in the world of show business, the entertainment news headlines, in a section we call the HBO Headlines. Give me head, give me head, give me headlines, and give me head. <laughs> No bigger star in the headlines this week than Justin Bieber himself. Um, we've been featuring him every week. No, no. Trust me, we all in this room hate him. There's no need to voice your disapproval. Um, 
we've been talking about him so much that we've talked about the fact that we need a, uh, a, jingle, a jingle for this you segment. Have one? Well, the fans have gone nuts. The listeners have gone crazy and been sending in a ton of jingles. I've sifted through most of them. I came to these three. Ooh. So we're going to take a listen to a couple of them and see what you think. Here's the first one from Jim Laskowski. He, uh, he wrote this one. Ralph and Kevin. Yeah, that's uh, maybe a little long for us. A little our on the long side, so. no? Let me fix this one from Buzz Compton. Buzz Compton from Germany. <laughs> yeah, I'm very hip over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am Buzz Compton, and everyone thinks I'm very cool here in Germany. Yeah, he's the hippest of all of us. That's right, because my name is Buzz. I'm like one of the American astronauts, you know. But, but, yeah. but, but he's straight out of Compton. That's right. <laughs> and I'm totally right, but, you know, the name Compton makes you think of the Schwarzes, you know? The, the, the crazy motherfucker named Ice Cube. <laughs> Here's Buzz Compton's jingle for Bieber. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> You missed it while you're being rude, laughing at Germany. That's what happened. <laughs> Can we replay that one for people who are rude and laughing at Germany, James? That's it. Brevity being the soul of wit, man. That's the strong contender. Yeah. And uh, Rich Williams from London and Birmingham in the UK, he said it would be a great honor if you use this in the Pop Scrotum news section. Remember, we're calling the Beaver the Pop Pop Scrotum. Here's uh, here's Riches. Justin Bieber. Nobody fucking needs ya. Wanna know why? I'll tell you why. Cause you're the little cunt. I think the people have spoken. They have, man. That's the winner right there. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah. It's as if The Cure did a jingle for us or something. <laughs> oh, my God. Fucking Brits. Why are they so much cooler than us? It's the accent. You can whip a cunt at the end, and it sounds Because you're cool. a fucking cunt. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Not even dirty. Lights out. Uh, Bieber in the news this week. Uh, here's the thing. He came back from overseas, his tour, which was a fucking disaster. He passed out. He tried to punch a guy in the UK. Uh, his bodyguard had to put him back in his car seat. And <laughs> it was a nightmare. He gets back from there, and he gets his new Ferrari delivered to his front door because, you know, he's got uh, a friend of his named Lil Twist, who's a rapper who just guzzles scissor and crashes his Ferraris, so he had to get a new one. He gets a new one, and he starts driving around the neighborhood. He lives in Calabasas, which is, for those of you who don't know, Southern California. It's about, I don't know, 45 minutes north of here. Very nice residential community. People move there to get away from fucking people like Justin Bieber. <laughs> and they're living in this neighborhood, and he starts driving this Ferrari around the neighborhood 100 miles an hour at 8 o'clock in the morning. So one of the neighbors comes out. He's got three kids. This guy comes out and says, look, you can't drive like this in this neighborhood. There's children here. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. The, the car makes a horrible noise. You're being rude. Justin Bieber, again, reporting from this 47-year-old father of three, said, get the fuck out of here. I'm going to fucking kill you, said Bieber. Well, actually, he didn't say that. What did he say? I'm going to fucking kill you. Right. <laughs> and then he spits in the guy's face. No. What the fuck? Really, man? You don't get to spit in anybody's face unless you're the fucking Batman. You just killed the Joker <laughs> in the Tunnel of Love, That's man. right. Those are That's the rules. That's the only time. I've said for many years I'd rather be peed on than spit on. Yeah, yeah. Well, that'd be weird, man. If he was like, fuck you. Hold on. Stay there. Because that's almost funnier. That's oh. funny. A guy whips out his penis and starts peeing on you. I can almost laugh at that. Oh, I'd But you spit on my face. It's fucking game on at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. And also, if somebody's peeing, if somebody spits on you, you got no time to capture the moment. It happens and shit. Somebody peeing on you, you got so much time. Oh, I'm going to vine this shit, man. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So uh, needless to say, Bieber's people saying, oh, that didn't happen at all. But 
The guy lodged, lodged a complaint with the authorities. The police are investigating. And it was Bieber. It wasn't somebody. It was he not. It wasn't it was. one of his crew. It was Bieber. And they're looking f into it, and they're investigating. And the authorities say, we take this very seriously. Because not only uh, is spitting just fucking rude. Yeah. But you can – it's communicable diseases and shit. Who yeah. knows what he's got from blowing monkeys in Germany or whatever. <laughs> I didn't know that was going on. Oh, really? Yeah, he's blowing monkeys over here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was. He took a monkey and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see it, but he told me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he'd put a banana on his forehead so the monkey would come close and then <laughs> blah, 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 blah. He would blow the monkey, yeah, it's true. We he's saw so, it. He's so we fucked up. We saw it, it's true. <laughs> oh, straight out of Compton. Bieber just came back from overseas, and in an unrelated story, it turns out the singer's pet monkey was quarantined in Germany. <laughs> he's got a pet monkey? Like he's, got a, uh, he's got a capuchin monkey. Uh, Michael, little one. Michael, a real fucking pop star, had a full-blown motherfucking chimpanzee yeah, yeah. who could rip your face off, <laughs> kill you, then fuck the corpse. Yeah. Bieber, lightweight that he is, has a little capuchin monkey. Has one of those friends monkeys. Marcel, remember the little monkey would jump around yeah. with a fucking uh, diaper on? Yeah. He had one of those, and he's got a tour with it, naturally, because I think the monkey is his band conductor. <laughs> uh, shows up in Germany with the monkey, and the Germans are like, uh, you know what? You can't bring uh, foreign monkeys in here. Yeah, you can't bring monkeys. No, because uh, monkeys have diseases. Yeah, monkeys are bad dirty. Yeah, and uh, you know we don't like uh, you to bring your monkey in here and with all the shit diseases. Yeah, yeah, so so nine <laughs> und abschminken. So he had to leave it behind with the customs when he went into tour in Germany, <laughs> and according to all, all accounts. He never picked the monkey up. <laughs> oh, shit. No one can find any mention of the monkey in Munich. No <laughs> Munich monkey. You never leave a monkey behind. Was is lost with the Munich monkey? Yeah, that's too spinky. <laughs> he got so excited he forgets to speak English. <laughs> so, uh, as far as we know, Bieber's monkey's still in Munich. At large. <laughs> that's right. Bieber's monkey at large. Right on, man. And when uh, Bieber was returning from, uh, the, from Europe to the States, he left out of Poland. And there was a big deal made about the fact that while he was at the Polish airport, uh, all the planes were facing the wrong way. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, you fucking Polak, you're so serious. <laughs> no, he was in Poland, and he was going through security, and he went <laughs> through shirtless with his pants down around his knees. Did you see these photos? No. Let's take a look at Justin going through security in Poland. I shit you not. This was not security saying, all right, son, strip down to uh, you know, your skivvies. He did this himself. <laughs> <laughs> Took off his Look shirt. Look at that picture, dude. That looks like that moment from Less Than Zero where fucking Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> is blowing a guy. He's like, I thought it was cool. <laughs> he took his shirt off in the limo and said, fuck it. I'm swag, yo. And he went topless into the Polish airport. He went through security with no uh, no shirt on, and it, these, you can't see it here because it looks like he's, he's you know he's got no pants on. But these are his pants down here around his thighs, and he walked through the entire airport like that for the entire afternoon. And by the way, it was 14 degrees in Poland that day. He must be he must be on something, right? Or he's missing his monkey. I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, he's fucking sitting there protesting the loss of his <laughs> monkey, but take my shirt off and jack my pants down. I imagine his pants are down like that all the time. Yes. Like that's where he wears them. That, and when that's he has what a shirt, he does, you don't see it. He's so got much. swag. But once you take your shirt off, don't you pull your pants up? No, not, not the beebs. It's so fucking he's got weird. Swag. It's so, like, I have to, my pants come down because they can't stay up because the gut <laughs> pushes them down. Yeah. This gentleman could easily hike straight up. Absolutely. He could, wear, he could wear tight pants that are form-fitting around his buttocks and he would be fine. What's he rebelling against? What do you got, man? <laughs> <That's> sexy. <laughs> Beaver apparently very upset this photograph has made the internet. He's also upset about the photographs from the UK which show him being put back in his car seat when that he was a adorable. baby. Yeah, yeah. He wants those off the internet. So there's been a whole new group of people now who are putting together photoshopped photos of Justin Bieber saying, Justin Bieber wants this picture off the photo. It's become a meme on the right. internet. This is my favorite one. I thought I'd bring it in. <laughs> 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 Justin Bieber wants this off the internet. 
It's uh, it's Bieber and Ray J, which is uh, <laughs> fuck tape star Kim Kardashian's boyfriend. Someone photoshopped them together and made a thing out of it. I say let that live on the internet forever. Yeah, that is definitely photoshopped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of my new favorites also uh, made it into the showbiz uh, news this week. And she has a theme. And she has a theme. Amanda Bynes is back. She will pay her fines and drive between the lines. No, you'll never escape from Amanda Bynes. Amanda, leave me alone, Bynes. Back in the news this week, she wants to be left alone, you fuckers. <laughs> she's not a TV star anymore. She is. She's a private person, and she wants to be left alone. That's why she tweets things like this. I want Drake to murder my vagina. <laughs> Oh. She's got a crush on Jake. Or, or Drake. <laughs> I'm sorry, I almost sobered up there for a minute. Is that what the kids are saying these days? Murder my vagina? I've never heard that before. Yeah. Well, I thought maybe that was in your book from 1947. <laughs> maybe you would have found that in there. Remember, boys, you always want to murder the vagina. She has a crush on Drake. Yeah. The pop star Drake. And she would like him, I'm guessing from her tweet, if I'm not misreading it, to murder her vagina. <laughs> But don't pay any attention to me, Right, Amanda adds. She also tweeted last week. Wait, wait, wait. Any ladies out here? Has anybody used that phrase, murder my vagina? Who, who, where, where, where? Well, I, but, that, but that sounded like a dude. <laughs> it was a dude. <laughs> Has a woman used that with you, sir? Yeah. Fire. We said fucking murder my vagina, not mangina. Because <laughs> I bet you there are a lot of dudes who are like, murder my man mangina. Vagina. That's yeah. a dude thing to say, but I can never imagine a girl being like, oh, murder the fuck out of my vagina. <laughs> he was on um, fucking uh, your show, wasn't he? Drake, yeah, Drake, he was yeah. on Degrassi. Degrassi, yeah. yeah he played Jimmy. Yeah. And then when Jimmy got shot, he wound up in a wheelchair, yeah. But now he's murdering a vagina, so he's better off. To be honest, though, and this is going to sound suck up but I always felt this. He, he was such an amazing actor on that show. Like, he was clearly more intuitive than most people. Bullshit. He's, if you go back and watch, yeah, fuck, I'm not I don't want him to murder my vagina. <laughs> I'm just paying a compliment. You go back and watch the early seasons of Degrassi, The Next Generation, he shines. He's a really good actor. Uh, she also tweeted last week, I created the phrase L-O-L-O-L. <laughs> She's taking credit for L-O-L? Yeah, yeah. That's weird on two levels. Number one, like, no, you didn't. Number two, why would you take credit for <laughs> right. that? Right. <laughs> she also tweeted, if I'm not following you on Twitter, I hate you, she wrote. Fuck, I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> Amanda desperately wants to be left alone. That's why she was seen wearing this outfit around Times Square this week. Uh, that is a crushed velvet uh, skirt she's wearing, bare legs, a uh, fur-topped hoodie, a fake wig. Uh, she found out that she was being watched, so she ducked into a McDonald's restaurant where she immediately ordered a coffee and a Coke and started drinking them both simultaneously. <laughs> like Two double straws. Them? No. Two straws in her mouth <laughs> simultaneously. She's got to be conducting some sort of experiment, right? Yeah. It's how fucking crazy can I be? <laughs> and then as she was leaving the McDonald's, she knows there are people out there with cameras, so she put on this uh, blue button-down shirt over her head. The only problem is witnesses in Times Square said she kept walking into shit. Oh, no. Yeah. One onlooker <laughs> said it looked like she was pretending to be a ghost. She kept <laughs> waving her arms in front of herself, <laughs> running into light posts and walls, <laughs> avoiding <laughs> attracting attention to herself. So, <laughs> Amanda, we've missed you. God bless. Lindsay Lohan! She's back in the news this week. Lindsay Lohan, why don't you come to your senses? I'm going to hit this quick because we have like 47 Lindsay Lohan stories to get through. <laughs> First of all, we found out uh, from a source close to her legal team that when she was dealing with that lying to cops charge in uh, court in Santa Monica, the only thing she told her legal team was, make sure I don't have to go to rehab before Coachella. That's what she said. <laughs> She made a point was the only marching order she gave her legal team was make sure I get to go to the Coachella Valley Arts and Music Festival in April so I can get fucked up before I go into rehab. 
That is, yeah, priorities, right? There priorities, there. absolutely. If I'm Coachella, I'm using that as advertising <laughs> on the billboard. Before I go to rehab, I'm going to Coachella. Come here before you go to jail. <laughs> she was on Anger Management. She did a guest starring role on the Charlie Sheen show, Anger Management. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had to go clubbing, naturally. Before she left uh, the, the set, she decided to help herself to a bracelet, a necklace, earrings, pants, and shoes from the wardrobe department. That's right, she stole shit from the wardrobe department of anger management. This is a group of people that are used to dealing with Charlie Sheen on a daily basis. <laughs> and this crew said it was the worst experience they've ever had working with someone. No, really? When she wrapped, when she was done with her final shot, this is according to TMZ.com, when she was wrapped and did her final shot on the set, the crew burst out into applause when they said she was leaving. <laughs> But not as a, like, she's wrapped No, congratulations. Like, yeah. good, you're a fucking nightmare. Get out of my life. That kind of applause. What do you think she does with all the stolen clothes and stuff? Takes it to, like, Buffalo Exchange or what? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you, like, she eBay's she really, it? <laughs> I mean, you think? It's crazy. Um, she says, her people are saying, well, uh, Lindsay was under the understanding that whatever she stole, I'm sorry, <laughs> took from wardrobe would be with, withdrawn from her salary. That's how they all would right, work that right. out. The producers say that was not the deal at all they had with Ms. Lohan. And my favorite story of the week featuring Lindsay is she's now currently in Sao Paulo, Brazil, um, promoting a clothing line there. She's being paid six figures to show up and promote the clothing line. She's also been going to the nightclubs, I'm sure just for research. And um, <laughs> apparently people there at the nightclub are asking to take photos with her. And so Lindsay, being an adult woman, responded the only way she knew how. She crawled under the table that she was drinking at. Ooh. That's a cry for help right there, man. No, it's a cry for cock right there is what that is. <laughs> I guess if you're it's under the table. She's at cock level. <laughs> if you're standing up, she's at cock level. You don't, Foggin, why you got to bring math into it this late <laughs> in the game? <laughs> Another one of our familiar favorites, Kim Kardashian. I'm sorry, fuck tape star Kim Kardashian's in the news. Kim Kardashian, Kim Kardashian, who gives a fuck? The Kardashians are upset this week because a photo of an ad from Ford Motors made the internet this week. Um, it was an Indian advertising campaign. Yeah, I saw this. This is weird. They're, uh, they're trying to promote their new car in India, Ford is. It's called the, let me get this straight, the um, Richard Parker. No, it's not. <laughs> it's called the uh, Figo, the Figo. Kay. And they claim it has a, a, an expansive uh, back end. <laughs> Why is it called the Figo and not the J-Lo? <laughs> or the Kim Fuck. Kardashian, for that matter. I was hoping that would have went over better. <laughs> uh, they did a sketch of Lindsay Lohan, not Lindsay Lohan, uh, Paris Hilton driving this car with uh, the Kardashians tied up and bound in the trunk. <laughs> with the premise being, leave your worries behind with the Figo's extra large trunk. As if, as if Paris Hilton was tired of it getting all the press, and so she's got them bound up and ready to murder in the trunk of their car. Oh. Here's, the, here's the, uh, the ad itself from this uh, Indian. Uh, it's a skit. Here's Paris, and there are the, the Kardashian girls ready to be murdered. Who can take offense to this? <laughs> well, apparently Chloe did. An attorney for the Kardashians said, the leave your worries behind Ford ads are disgusting, vile, and offensive. They <laughs> That's claimed. coming from the fucking Kardashians? Yes. I, not, can I tell you a real quick thing, man? Like, I didn't, I'm not, I don't watch this, and every time you tell the story, I'm just like, wow, it's so weird. I don't know anybody who watches this show. I found somebody that fucking watches this show at fucking ground zero in my house, dude. What? My kid watches Keeping Up With The Kardashians. No way. Yes, and then one day I finally said, I was just like, what the fuck, man? I was like, really? And she's like, yeah, I watch it all the time. I was like, why? Why would you watch that? She goes, Dad, it's hysterical. And I go, oh, you're breaking my heart, man. Like, what do you mean it's hysterical? She's like, the one boy, Rob, he's such a loser. <laughs> she goes, he tried to start a sock company, and it failed, and he had to move in with his sisters. And yeah. she starts laughing like they're characters on a sitcom. <laughs> and, I was, and I was just like, oh, I see why you like it. You think it's funny. I said, but these people are fucking for real. And she's like, no, they're actors. <laughs> <laughs> He did try to start a designer sock company. Uh, yeah, really. For real. that's what she said. That Who the good. fuck does that? 
You know what? I have this Armani suit. You know what I really need, though? I need a fucking designer line of socks to put on before I put my shoes on. Who does that? Yeah. Stupid people do that. Yeah, yeah. And she the, sees him as a modern-day Jack Tripper, dude. She thinks <laughs> Come she on, thinks knock on like my door. Company, yeah. yeah, the uh, Kardashian lawyer said that this ad was disgusting, vile, and offensive, and I can see why I'd be upset. Um, in an unrelated story, the Kardashians this week on their show, Courtney and Kim Take Miami, had a pussy-smelling contest. <laughs> Well, now I'm going to start watching this show with my kid, man. Holy crap. Uh, Chloe. <laughs> told Disney is going to bill us every time we use that now. Told Courtney and Kim, and Courtney and Kim takes Miami, that if you drink enough pineapple juice, it makes your vagina smell wonderfully. So, I know, it makes t- cum taste good, right, sir? Yes, I know, we know the truth about pineapple juice. That's the same guy that was like, murder my mangina. I murder vaginas (laughs) with my sweet tasting cum. (laughs) I got to introduce you to pie over here, man. (laughs) And Rosa up there. (laughs) And Richard Parker. (laughs) And we could come too. (laughs) And people's monkey. (laughs) Um, So Courtney and Kim have a bet about whose pussy smells better. This is on fucking TV. This fucking happened. <laughs> this was broadcast. They think the ad was fucking vile and disgusting. They're smelling each other's cunts on this show. <laughs> How do they do it? How well, do let me tell you, Kevin. So Kim and Courtney say, well, my pussy smells better. No, sister, my pussy smells better. This is a fucking television show. How do I do it? Well, let me take a cloth napkin. I'm going to rub my pussy all over a cloth napkin. And I'm going to bring it out. Oh, well, really? Well, I'll rub my pussy with a big cloth napkin. Hold Ooh. on, hold on, hold on. Say it slower. <laughs> <laughs> this is so repugnant to me. Well, who's going to be the judge, Courtney? I don't know, Kim. Who's going to smell our pussy smells? Hey, Chloe, what are you doing this, this week? Oh. <laughs> well, yeah. Han Solo gave me the week off, so I guess I'll smell your pussies for you. Everybody give me your cloth napkins and I'll sniff them and I'll see who's got the best smelling pussy and suddenly I'm Lewis Black. (laughs) So Courtney, mother of two, goes up against Kim Kardashian who's had every fucking guy you can imagine just murdering her pussy. (laughs) They, they smear themselves all over cloth napkins and they present them like they're, it's, just, it's the fucking glass slipper to Cinderella. They bring it up to Chloe and they say, here, sister, smell my cunt and tell me what do you think of it. Who won? Well, here's a little videotape you can watch for yourself. Do this next. Do I want to be the judge of the pineapple Not really, but we're sisters. If I can't smell their what else am I supposed to do? The pineapple there, souffle. There she is, smelling it. Yeah, smell mm. that vagina. It smells like a tropical. Smell island. your sister's vagina. Like oh, here comes Kim's yeah. vagina. I'm not smelling Connie's. Is that not the best smelling? <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> uh, smells like a flower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chloe, by the way, declared Kim the winner of the best smelling vagina competition of the Kardashian family. Yeah, I'm sure after Ray J's been slamming away at it and Kanye and Chris Humphreys and uh, you and me, everybody has just been... It's just so funny. That was on television. It's so weird that there are shows like... I loved uh, a show, Pushing Daisies, so much. Very similar. And Very ex- similar. And it struggled to get fucking ratings and shit. Yeah. And that's gone. They canceled it. But this shit's on the air where she's like, smell my pussy. Monster hit. Monster and you hit. would think I'd be all over it, but I'm just like, ew. Southland is in is in danger of being canceled on TNT. But the smell this, my pussy show. Smell my pussy show, show is just couldn't be bigger ratings. To be fair, if they called the show Smell My Pussy, I would totally tune in every episode. <laughs> that sounds like a game show that you should host, actually. Smell, smell, smell my, my pussy. pussy. I wish the other one had been in on it, the Wookiee chick, because then oh. they could have been like, let the Wookiee win. <laughs> she could rip their arms off. <laughs> oh, can you imagine the visible fumes that would have come off that cloth napkin? This is what it would have like been looking like that shimmering heat kind of thing in a, 
like a Miami asphalt, you know, in the distance when you're driving through Florida in August. It's you would have seen that just that, that shimmer coming off of it. What's even weirder is like Kim Kardashian came out with hers and like tried to shove it in her sister's face in the way that like a Jason Muse would do to you if he was like, smell my finger and shit like that. Speaking of reality television, the Duck Dynasty boys are in the news this week. Oh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> it's no better. It's no better than the pussy smelling show. It's the, it's the toothless make a duck decoy show is what it is. <laughs> However, it is earning 8.6 million viewers a week. Oh, man. Between fucking them and Honey Boo Boo, the lesson is just take the camera and point it down south, man. <laughs> That's all America wants to watch is what's going down below. They're ready to make the fourth season of Duck Dynasty because we all can't wait to see if they make another fucking duck call or not. <laughs> but uh, the family, the Robertson family, isn't so eager to uh, shoot the next one. They want $200,000 an episode. What, a piece? No, for the family. They, they're going to split it up, uh, you know, I don't know, 40000 per tooth, I guess, for each of them. <laughs> I mean, not not for nothing, but it's that's not like fucking friends money or something like but that. But these guys were living in the swamp, carving shit out of wood. But, up weren't, till they, now. but weren't they already wealthy because of the duck? Call? Well, the, the business is doing very well, and it's doing even better because of the promotion from the show. So they're 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 very comfortable right now. Yeah. yeah but yeah. now they want more from A and E, and A and E's, you know, they're saying, "Fuck, we got to find dumber, cheaper Southerners now." Or or they're probably gonna do the obvious, which is like, fuck it, break it off, man. We're pulling that kind of rating number. Fucking give them what they want. I mean, two hundred. It's not like if they were like two hundred a piece, then it'd be like you guys are nuts. But two hundred to split amongst the family and stuff when they're pulling that kind of rating. I mean, the I'm reason you do a reality show is because it's cheap. Yeah, it's not until it's not. But it's like every it's it's falling into the same model of every TV show, which is you start at one budget. By the time you're in fucking, if you make it to season ten. You're so successful, you have to stop because it's too fucking expensive to do. Those so it seems like it's happening now for reality shows as well. Those guys may cycle. get their money. You know who got his money this week? Our old friend. Our old friend, Jose Martinez, the, uh, the paraplegic who was stuck on the small world ride at Disneyland. Remember him? Get the fuck out of here, man. He sued Disney because, for those of you who don't know the story, he was stuck on the It's a Small World ride. Man uses a wheelchair. Uh, he was stuck in the boat. Everyone else got out because the uh, ride broke down, but he was stuck inside the ride for hours while the song played over and over and over <laughs> again while he was stuck in the boat. We and we talked about the story when it first happened. When he first, when he first <laughs> filed his lawsuit, we talked about it. And we felt it looked a little something like this. <laughs> it's a small world after <laughs> all. <laughs> It's a small world <laughs> It's a small <laughs> It's a world of <laughs> Jose uh, finally got I his day in sport. I want to make that short <laughs> film, man. <laughs> Jose finally got his day in court, and he did win. He did win uh, the uh, jury. Good for him. The jury awarded him $8,000. <laughs> That's right. The duck fucking makers are making 200 grand, and Jose, stranded there on that boat, made eight grand. How long was he stranded? Uh, he was there a couple hours. Stranding him for a half hour while the theme song <laughs> played. Eight grand for a half hour? I want that kind of sweet money, man. It felt longer. I would imagine. <laughs> uh, the judge said that it was a half for pain and suffering and half for violating the disability law because they couldn't get him out of the boat when the, uh, when the uh, thing... Broke down because so. they built that long before fucking That's anybody. That's right. Because Walt Disney hated cripples. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. That is a fact. That has been documented. Walt hated fucking cripples. In the wonderful world of Disney, everybody walks. That's right. <laughs> 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 Uh, 
Jose said he suffers from panic attacks, high blood pressure, which was aggravated because he needed to urinate while he was in the boat. Just go, exactly, yeah. sir. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do when I'm in small world, right over the side of the boat. <laughs> it's a world of urine, a world of... <laughs> You're like, watch me hit the flying fish. Hey, you know, we may need a new closing segment for this show because this week all everyone's been talking about is John Ham's cock. I heard, man. I heard. It's getting big. John Ham, star of mass, uh, Mad Men, people just talking about his cock, can't stop talking about his cock. Here we are trying to build up a little uh, heat for Liam Neeson's cock, and meanwhile, John Ham's cock taking all the, He's all the up front page John news. John Ham's cock's coming up from behind. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it started with a uh, New York Daily News article that said they spoke to an AMC insider who said they're currently filming the upcoming season of Mad Men, and because it takes place in the, f in the late 60s, clothes are tighter now, and John Ham likes to go commando, and his penis is distracting, so the producers had to ask him, politely pull him aside and ask him to wear underwear because his massive cock is too distracting. What is underwear going to do? Well, it'll, it'll keep it into a package. It'll hold it up into a package instead of down his leg dangling the way <laughs> it has been, apparently. So they're like, we, we're okay with your cock. Just wrap it tight. Just make it a bulge. We need, Don Draper should have a bulge. He shouldn't have a salami hanging down the inside of his thigh. Now, I didn't know this, but apparently there's been a Tumblr called John Ham's Wang that's been going on for two years now. So we're late to the John Ham cock game, apparently, yeah, yeah, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, John talked about it in an interview with Rolling Stone magazine this month, who said, most of it's tongue-in-cheek, but it's a little rude. They're called privates for a reason. I'm wearing pants for fuck's sake. I mean, lay off. Whoa. Whoa. They're talking about how big your cock is, yeah, John really? Ham. Yeah, unappreciative motherfucker. Where's the downside in that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, please, stop talking about how huge and luscious and satisfactory <laughs> and it's like a baby's arm holding an apple, like fucking Dumbo's trunk my dick is. It's rude. <laughs> When people feel the freedom to create Tumblr accounts about my cock, I feel like that wasn't part of the deal, he says, regarding being an actor. It is in the 21st century, dude. Jockey and Fruit of the Loom underwear, by the way, have offered him a lifetime supply in order to keep his massive fucking fat, juicy cock <laughs> just somehow harnessed from keeping from raping and pillaging its way through neighborhoods. Do we have photographic backup? Funny you should ask, Kevin, because... You know, those of us here at Hollywood Babylon are always fascinated by a good celebrity cock. So I went over to John Ham's Wang myself, and my wife, by the way, curious about my, my internet history this week. <laughs> Let's take a look at John Ham's Wang, shall we? This is John Ham walking with his lovely girlfriend uh, here. Can we, use, can we get a closer picture of uh, this here? This is. Uh, this is down the inside of his leg. There's Holy the, shit, the, the man. Rim He's got there. fucking quato <laughs> on his leg. If you're thinking, if it, start, if it starts here, let's imagine it starts here. Yeah. This is the, this length right here. This is what we're talking you about. You can see the ridge and shit. He's cut. Yeah. <laughs> Stop talking about my massive, amazing cock that women love. He's fucking not mad, man. He's happy, man. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Mr. T, I love fucking Mr. T. No, I don't. I, uh, it's very uncomfortable. The reason I bring it up, because you and I are both hockey fans. Did you see him this week at the, at the Blackhawks game? I did not. I just wanted to bring it up because he's, he's Mr. T. He's, I don't know, he's 100 now, and he's, he no longer pities the fool. He's just... <laughs> He's just, he's an older man who's just trying to get by and, and trying to milk whatever little level of fame he has left to make a buck. They had him at the Chicago Blackhawks uh, Calgary Flames game this week, and they put him in the, um, one of the intermissions to have him be the celebrity guy who shoots the puck at the net, and no one does well on that. And it's embarrassing, and he's old, and he's wearing a bandana, and he's got chains on, and it's sad. But something magical happened. Here's Mr. T taking a shot at the goal during the intermission between the first and second periods at the Blackhawks game. Oh, 
It's all five hole, man. Yeah. Well Fucking what? Did, did he win something, or somebody win something that he won him for him, or something? Or uh, what? No, they uh, they gave him a space heater for his box. <laughs> no. He's got a cardboard box outside the arena, and they just put a space heater no. in there. Pity the fool can't stay warm. Pity the fool has no newspaper to cover himself up with. Remember how cool he was in fucking Rocket 3? He was the man. Hey, woman. Hey, woman. Lang. He was the toughest guy on the planet. Oh, totally. Yeah. You should have never came back. Threat. Let me show you how real man satisfies you. Oh, yeah. My prediction? Pain. Pain. <laughs> yeah. I remember when fucking Stallone was, they were fighting in the last one, and he just kept putting his hand on his mohawk. Yep. I, was, I remember being a kid and being like, oh, if I could be that fucking badass. And shit. You're in the middle of the fight for your life. This dude's beat you before. You're so fucking confident. You've trained so well that you're just like. He's going to mock boop. him. You're going to mock boop, him. Boop. Oh, that's yeah. awesome, man. That makes me want to watch that movie. But my wife, she don't like the Rocky movies at all. What? They're the best movies ever. She's My, my, my wife hates every fucking movie with a guy in the lead. She's like, another stupid boy movie. <laughs> Every movie's about some boy with problems who wins. You know, so she don't how like did you? That. How did you ever marry that woman? Uh, opposites attract. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> you should have married Paul Abdul then. <laughs> how dare you, sir? <laughs> Smith and I, of course, longtime geeks. Every week we like to take a look at the geek news. James? Ralph and Kevin, Ralph and Kevin, Ralph and Kevin. This week in Geek News, I was shocked and stunned by this Geek News. I'm talking about the cast of the next Captain America film, Captain America 2. Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Can't wait. I'm there. They cast Robert Redford in the film. Oh, that's what really is? Who? He's going to play one of the executives at the law enforcement agency, S.H.I.E.L.D., a character named Pierce. He's going to play one of the higher-ups at S.H.I.E.L.D. That's cool. That's very cool. He's what, like 70 something at this point? Right? Yeah, but he still looks good. Yeah, he's Robert Redford. He's, he's Robert Redford. Redford. In a Marvel movie. That Come makes on, that movie man. immediately mu that much cooler. But also, just like go back 20 fucking years, man, or even fucking like, maybe 10 years at this point. Nobody was jumping into comic book movies. Mm -hmm. Jack Nicholson they had to pay him a fucking king's ransom and 50% of like Brando. all Joker profits. Brando did Superman. That and was they like gave this. him a pile of money, too. They gave him. One million dollars. Back in what, 1977, <laughs> Seven, 77. Yeah. But yeah. now we live in a day and age where somebody like Robert Redford, who's one of the most respected filmmakers, actors of, of all time, yep. is like, I'm going to be in a comic book movie. That's, that, right. that's a cool thing for a comic book He fan. said, um, this is the kind of film I'd like to see when I was a kid. That's yeah. why he's doing it. Fuck yeah. Because he's old enough to remember when Captain America was actually fighting the Nazis. <laughs> He is. He, he truly is. Yeah, it's true, man. Yeah. It's true. Uh, George St. Pierre, the UFC fighter. He has been announced he's going to play Batroc the Leaper. Oh, really? Yeah. Worst fucking villain in the history of Marvel yeah. Comics. <laughs> you know what I do? I leap. <laughs> uh -huh. Hello, superhero. I'm not going to leap at you. Uh -huh. Now I'm going to leap backwards. You can't catch me because I leap. He's the leaper. That's his fucking superpower is he leaps a lot. Yeah. <laughs> what? It, it, you know, they ran out of shit and powers at a certain point. They're like, this guy, he just jumps. This guy, he's the walker. <laughs> What's he do? Uh, he gets from it's, one place to another. <laughs> it's D'Angelo the stroller. Yes. I, I'm going to stroll away from you. You cannot catch me. Look at me. I stroll. Captain America, fuck you. <laughs> I gotta go buy some <laughs> pizza. Bye bye now. <laughs> yeah, always had some ethnicity against Captain America. Always had to be from some other country. <laughs> I'm the French leaper. I will leap at you. <laughs> what about uh, the Diedrich and Franz, the, the fucking joggers? <laughs> yeah, we just jog. Yeah, we jog all the time. You can catch us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If a villain jogs away, we can catch That's him. That's right. In Lederhosen. <laughs> MGM has announced a Tomb Raider reboot. They just bought the rights for Tomb Raider. They're going to make more Lara Croft movies. I, I can see that happening. I'm not necessarily like, I can't wait, but why not? Why not reboot that franchise? I like they those Angela Jolie movies. I like those. Yeah, yeah. She was hot in those. And speaking of hot, uh, the porn business once again has trumped reality. There you have just announced the Wonder Woman XXX, the porn parody. Oh. <laughs> There's nothing funny about that, sir. <laughs> My penis has already gone on to Netflix looking for how to get it. 
Wonder Woman in a porn movie. It's the culmination of my uh, of my lifetime dreams. No doubt, man. That the, lasso the, it's, coming it's in handy. It's the two things coming together. It's the comics and the porn crossing at the most perfect way. Yep. Axel Braun, the guy who does all these comic book porn movies, he's the one who's directing it. He released a still of his Wonder Woman, an actress named Kimberly Kane. It's, 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 she it's, has like a comic book name. She does. She sounds yeah, like alliterative. she should be part of the Batman family. But yeah. she's Kimberly Kane. She's Wonder Woman. This is the photo of the new Wonder Woman from the porn version. Oh, she looks cute. She looks fucking great. Yeah. If I was going to cast a, a straight version Wonder Woman movie, I would put her in. And that costume finally looks like a costume that someone could actually wear and not be thought of as cheesy or stupid. In fact, you remember the David E. Kelly TV version they were going to do with yes, Adrian Palicki? With the pants. Let's put them side to side and say, which one looks like the porn movie version? <laughs> <laughs> this is David oh E. God, Kelly's. Right. <laughs> looks like he got that at Fredericks of Hollywood for Halloween, and the porn one looks legitimate. The one on the right looks like the slogan should be like, justice is anal. <laughs> <laughs> She'll stick Bullets and bracelets up your ass. She's Wonder Woman. Yeah, Steve Trevor never had it so good. So that's the uh, that's the new porn Wonder Woman. I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna peep it out, man. You don't like the porn parodies. No, but I'll peep it out regardless. You didn't watch the Clerks porn parody yet. I've, I've yet to watch. I'm gonna watch it though. Are you really? I've uh, will you jerk off to it? Yeah, especially if there's a Silent Bob character <laughs> I find attractive. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that, man. Um, uh, I've seen a lot of people on Twitter have reported not only like, oh, it's fucking hot and fun, but a lot of people are like, dude, it's so true to Clerks, it's nuts. Like, I, it's I have watched it, by the way. Is it true to, to the script? And they, they do a lot of homages to like the script and the storyline and stuff. It's kind of fun. I'm, I'm in. Stop it. I can masturbate if I want to. <laughs> Speaking of masturbation, each and every week we like to take a look at another celebrity penis. We might have to change this bit to John Hamm. But no, we stick by our celebrity cock. Liam now. Neeson, he is the cock that we like to talk about. <laughs> Of course, you can go to neesoncock.com yourself if you'd like to add any facts about the size of Liam Neeson's cock. Not to uh, be confused with John Ham's wang. <laughs> no, that's a whole different website. Uh, I want to thank uh, Lissery Gleason from Rochester, New York, for kicking us off this week. She sent in a photo, and I shit you not, this was a photo she took while she was walking. She was hiking through her neighborhood of Rochester, New York with her yeah. dog. She sent us this photo. She said, seriously, she saw this, and she wanted to send it along to let us know that the word is spreading. Here's the photo that she saw. The drain pipe. Oh! And somebody had spray-painted Liam's cock was here. That's awesome. More of that. More of that. As an entertainer. It's nice to know you're making a difference. Yeah, man. Our comedy is changing the landscape. When you walk through a storm, <laughs> hold your head up high. All right, let's take a look at Liam Neeson's cock facts this week. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? When it visited Germany, customs let it keep its monkey. <laughs> That explorers recently discovered in a previously unknown culture living on the tip <laughs> <laughs> that has adapted to extremely high altitude and is completely unaware of modern civilization. <laughs> I had to take a breath in the middle of that one. <laughs> the un that's the uncontacted <laughs> tribes, man. That's funny. <laughs> he says cock is so big. How big is it? A man returned Taken 2 to Redbox three days ago. Liam Neeson's cock is still in his living room. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It killed its trainer at SeaWorld and no one said a thing. <laughs> <laughs> he added, so shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. It's what caused Stella to lose her groove in the first place. It's a mom joke. <laughs> yeah. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? 
The Supreme Court ruled that same-sex couples are legally married if it performs the ceremony. <laughs> That's big. And lastly, Liam Neeson's cock is so big. If you pull back its foreskin, you will find the Wizard of Oz operating it. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen of Hollywood, have you had a good time this evening? Thank you so much for coming out tonight. We really do appreciate you being here with us. Thanks for being here. Thanks for selling it out. Give it up for the amazing man, the host of the show, Mr. Babylon himself, Ralph Garman. And of course, my partner, and the man who's smoking all that sweet, sweet kush, Mr. Kevin Smith, everybody. And that is Hollywood Babylon for this week. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. Babble the fuck off. Good night, Los Angeles. <laughs>